Mr. Mr. Chair, right. not working. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr Chair. I rise to take a short call on um, the Committee of the Whole House of the Immigration Number 2 Bill. Um, Mr Chair, I want to say from the start that I support everything that the previous speaker has just said. Um, we have to acknowledge that there is some, uh, some, some goodwill uh, towards the government for putting forward this bill because it is an attempt to address the exploitation of migrant workers. And I also agree with the previous speaker that the way the government has gone about it is not good enough. And so we won't be supporting it. The, um, we recognise that migrant workers are some of the most vulnerable workers in Aotearoa in New Zealand. And as the previ previous speaker explained, the power imbalance in the employment relationship for workers is, it exists there um, under the current, uh, current situation, but when you're a migrant worker, it's even more of an imbalance. We're now in a situation with our industrial relations environment where workers are becoming increasingly vulnerable. They've got less say and less power and less ability to negotiate. Uh, and when you're a migrant worker, sir, this is, this is, um, uh, this is a problem that escalates by about tenfold. The labour market, sir, is becoming increasingly swamped with migrant workers and we are increasingly concerned at the amount of um, exploitation that is occurring. Um, as outlined by the previous speaker in the situation with Queenstown, the, um, uh, the, the government's actions in um, welcoming low-paid workers into the country is having an impact on the ability for, um, for New Zealand workers to be paid anything above the minimum wage. Um, so what in effect is happening is that, we, that, is that many employers are using migrant workers to force down wages so that wage costs become less and less for them, which is all very well for the employer, but in terms of what it's like for workers, it makes it harder for people to make a living and it makes it harder for them to make ends meet. It's also really bad for local economies. If you're relying just on low-paid migrant workers, um, as is the case in Queenstown. What it does is that uh, it, it means that local families aren't able to afford to be able to live in the areas and you get the situation which we seem to be heading to for, for in Waiheke Island where I live, where actually we're importing low paid workers to get the hospitality jobs done because nobody can afford to live there because they're not being paid enough. So we see this, um, uh, we see the government's attempts to bring some sanctions against um, employers who are migrants themselves as a step in the right direction. It's a nod in the right direction. But, sir, we don't believe it goes far enough. The bill still doesn't address the fact or offer any protections for migrant workers themselves who are being exploited for when they blow the whistle. So quite recently I dealt with a case and I want to thank the Minister's office for their support um, and assistance in this issue. But we dealt with a very sad case where a woman was faced with deportation, basically because although she had come to New Zealand at the request of the employer who was a migrant themselves, who had, who had received residency, although she'd come to New Zealand to work here in a specialist job, as soon as she got to New Zealand, the job, she found out that the job that she'd been given had changed, was changed at one. So instead of being a specialist job, they were, she was being asked to clean. And not only that, she was on very limited hours and on call, basically zero hour contracts. She was also paid the minimum wage. Now, sir, within a couple of weeks, she'd actually talked to her employer and said, look, I need to earn enough to be able to, um, to live here. Um, and so I, I need to actually be doing the work that you brought me over here to do. She was sacked immediately. And within a month or two, uh, her employer had actually dobbed her into the immigration department so that her work visa, her work visa was revoked. So when she came to see me, she was facing deportation. And at that stage, she was also receiving assistance from an advocate in the employment relations field. They took the issue through, while she was still trying to avoid deportation, they took the issue through to mediation with the Employment Relations Authority, the mediation service there with MB. 
And actually, the employer admitted that they had failed her. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, George. the employer admitted that that they had failed her in um, providing what was supposed to be provided in the employment agreement that she had agreed to and signed, for that matter, um, and they agreed on a settlement. But, sir, that settlement made no impact at all on the fact that her work visa had been revoked. And so her protection, her limited... Well, she had received no protection whatsoever for being able to... Um, identify the issue that there was a, a, a rogue migrant employer, uh, an employer who was not treating workers fairly, who was exploiting them, um, and raising that issue led to her being deported from New Zealand, despite the fact that she did receive a settlement through, the, um, through, through our, our labour relations laws. And so she was basically left in a situation where she the settlement that she did receive was spent on her ticket back to her home country. Now, this is a very sad state of affairs for any worker, but particularly for this woman who, her and her family had been looking forward to coming to New Zealand, to settling here, to contributing to our economy. And it's not an easy thing for workers or anybody to actually make that decision. And we know from people in this house who have migrated here themselves that it's not an easy decision, but it's one where they want to contribute as much as they can to this economy, to this society, to have that taken away from under her feet in a very unfair way was just incredibly sad. And there was nothing we could do about it. And so this bill does not go any way towards trying to address this issue. It does provide sanctions against employers themselves who may be acting unlawfully, but it doesn't protect the workers. I agree with previous speakers, sir, as well, about the powers of the immigration officers. And I absolutely agree that these are... Uh, these matters should be transferred to Labor inspectors because essentially we're looking at workplace relationships that have gone sour. And immigration is an area where migrant workers feel very, very vulnerable that at any moment they could be deported, their visas revoked. And so to place them in a situation where they will be investigated by immigration officers with extended powers is to increase their vulnerability, sir. So we will not be voting for this bill, and we understand that it is in its attempt, it is an attempt to try to address the situation of exploited workers, but sir, it's not going to do that. And I would like to see this parliament operating in a way that does actually fix the problems that come to us. Thank you.